Hey guys, it's Sharika. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love to have you. So today we're just doing some Dungeness Crab. I have some potatoes back here and my mayo and mustard dip. For today's drink, we're going to name this a Nikocado. Okay. <laughs> Let's say grace. Amen. Hey y'all. Happy Saturday. I have my napkins back here. Yes, I have some Dungeness, which is my favorite crab. We're going to get right into it. I do have a story time today. But before we get into the story time, y'all seen Nick Akato? Is it Nick Akato? Nick Avocado. Y'all don't play with him. If y'all didn't see him, y'all need to go check him out. Hopefully, let me see. Let's see his crab. Make sure. Make sure they look good. I think he said he lost like 250 pounds or something like that. He looks amazing. My mouth was on the floor. Like on the floor. For a while. I couldn't believe it. He looks so good. He looks so young. He did that. So kudos to you. Okay. You look amazing. I wonder if Orland lost weight too. But right now, Nick is breaking the internet. I've been seeing everybody on TikTok talk about it. I haven't really been on YouTube today. So I don't know if they talk, I'm pretty sure they are talking about it, but on TikTok, that's all you see. And I didn't realize that he was gone for seven months. So let's get into the story time. So there was this girl named Jasmine. Jasmine was about 16 when she started like really acting out just not wanting to listen to anybody giving her mama a hard time acting up in school stealing lying and she kind of got out of control so she ended up dropping out of school and her mom told her, if you don't want to go to school, you don't have to get the heck up out of here. Okay. Sent her with me, my name. So, by the time she turned 19, she was done with the street life. Well, she was ready to come home. Look at that. Can y'all see it? Hopefully it don't look too bright. So she moved back in with her mom at 19. And again, at this time, you know, she's grown up. She's kind of grown out of the bad girl lifestyle.
So, she moved back in with her mom and she started working. Got her life back on track, saving money. You know, now she's a more responsible adult, okay? So, she stayed with her mom for several years. When she turned 26, she told her mom she wanted a fresh start. She wanted to move to a different state. So, I'll just say she moved to Miami. All right. So she moved to Miami by herself. She don't have no friends, no family, no nothing. Like I said, it's just a fresh start. She got a job. She got a job at a strip club. But she wasn't doing no strip. But the guys were still doing the tip. All right. She worked in a strip club as a bottle girl. So, you know, she done made a name for herself. A real popular bartender. She know how to do all the tricks. And everything, right? And y'all know in the strip club, and this was like a, a very popular strip club. So, you know, the bottles and shot collars coming in. We don't call it bottles and shot collars no more. What we call it? Because I don't know that. So, girl, all the dudes used to try to talk to her. Because she was a fine, pretty little thing. But she never really gave any of the guys that was coming in there a chance. And took this one dude walked in one day. Honey, when he walked in, it was like camera action. It was kind of like a the BMF movie. Like they cut he walked in, everybody running to him, dapping him up, taking pictures of him, the girls going crazy. He making it thunderstorm in there, okay? Right, so he see her. She see him, and they kind of got their eye on each other. So every time he come in that same thing, the girls come running out. They're going to get a couple of bills paid that night. It's always a big deal. So finally, he decides he's going to approach her. And he's like, hey, hey, my mom, what's your name? And she was like, Jazz. So, <laughs> look, y'all listen, trying to see what kind of Mac I know. <laughs> so, they started talking. They started dating, long story short. And after a while, he was taking on trips. He was buying the gifts. Sometimes he would tell them, y'all know how they used to tell you back in the day. Call off from work. I pay for your day. You you know how it used to be. We like, okay, Gwen. So, girl, after a while, she was like, "Well, what kind of work you do? Like, you know, what are you into? Because you whining, you dining, you making it rain in the club. We going on trip. You know, we doing the whole thing." What you do for work? So at first, you know, girl, it's me. I be like, we in a whole conversation for real, for real. And I be holding my crabs back here and just talking to y'all. I gotta start holding my crabs just so y'all can see it. But girl, so he finally told her, he said, well, he have a few girls at a different club because he didn't live in that city. I forgot to mention that. He didn't live in that city. But he had a girl, some girls in a different city. 
that work for him. And it was like the the clients that he had were like real high profile people. Like it wasn't just like, you know, on the corner type situation. It was, you know, he, he hooking them up with top notch people, right? Very low key, very demure. So girl, we were like, okay, whatever. After a while, it's time for her to go pick up some money with them. So they go to the club, but they're just meeting some of the girls out there. Like they don't, they're some of the girls that he was meeting to get his money from that night wasn't working. They just met him up there. And it was this one particular girl that kind of stood out from the rest. Here I go again. They kind of stood out from the rest. Because like I said, she ain't working. But she coming up there. She got she barely have on any clothes. Like she just wanna look. She's looking very sexy. You know. She was a cute girl. And they was kind of friendly towards each other. He, she made a couple of runs with him, so every time it'd be the same girl just doing too much. So she had her eye on him. So at this point, she didn't really trust him. Now, again, they lived in different cities. So now that he see, you know, she always questioning him about the other girl. He tell her, well, why don't you just come and move down here with me? Leave your job. I'll take care of everything. Come move here with me. You love me, I love you. So, of course, she agreed. Now, he had this couple that he was friends with. And of course, they knew, you know, the business, what he did, things like that. They would do double dating, Jasmine. We'll call the dude, we'll call the dude Smoke. So, Smoke and, and Jasmine would go, you know, hang out with the other couple and then eventually develop a relationship with them where she can go hang out when he at work or whatever. Because the guy, he had his girl too. So, you know, how that go. So, she would go child on. She would go to the neighbor's house complaining about him. Like, some nights he wouldn't come at home. He ain't answering his phone. When she called him, she hear a girl in the background laughing. So she was like, something ain't right. And I know which girl it is. So, you know, the neighbor friends, they'll be like, no, it ain't nothing going on like that. He love you. He ain't never had no girl living there. That's how I know he love you. This, that, the third. You know, just trying to calm her down. But she wasn't trying to hit that. So she goes on Facebook. She find a girl on Facebook. Soon as she get to her page, it's a picture of the girl and Smoke. The girl like team us, hashtag he been mine, hashtag he know we home at, hashtag she can never be me, hashtag, I, I mean, together forever, okay? So she filming smoke coming out her ears now. Hello. So smoke come walking through the door. They get the argument. He like, why you calling me so many times? And she like, I know you been with that B. I seen her Facebook. I see what's going on this damn thing. So why they going at it? 
Jasmine already got a plan in her head. So she tells the neighbor friend to call the girl and act like he's a client and just leave the door open. All right. So the neighbor friend, he just thinking it's going to be a little girl fight. He down with it. He going to just do it for us. You know what I'm saying? Do it for him. So they make the arrangement. It's time to meet up with the side girl. So Smoke was like, well, he want to come too. The neighbor friend, girlfriend, she stayed back. She didn't have time for that. So neighbor friend walked in. The girl telling him she about to blow his mind. What she going to do to him? She going to make his toes curl. You know, the neighbor's going to know her name. Like, everybody, she was just really, you know what I'm saying? Laying it on thick. And the boy had second thoughts about leaving the door open because she had really excited him. You know what I'm saying? So, it was a little tough to push her off. But he was like, okay, let me go get my money out the car. So, she was like, all right, I'm going to go freshen up. So, girl, when he walked and opened the door, here come Jasmine busting through. It's Jasmine and Smoke. They get to fight him. So, the boys let him fight for a while. And Jasmine couldn't really handle it at first. But she kind of got the best of her after a while because she was bigger than... Uh, the little side girl. So, girl, Jasmine was like, I'm taking this bitch with me. She coming with me. She coming with us. All right. You gonna be a side chick, you coming with us. They pulled the girl and put it in the car. So, you know, Neighbor friends smoke. They ain't really thinking nothing of it. They like, okay, they don't really know what the plan is because Jasmine, you know, she just out of the blue said, put the girl in the car. So they ain't know like, okay, well, what, the, what are we putting in the car for? But okay, they just went with it. Brought them back to neighbor friend them house. The girl looking like, neighbor friend, girlfriend, she looking like, what the hell? Like, why y'all, uh-uh. Y'all gotta go. They start fighting in the neighbor friend house. So they break it up. She like, I need to call and check on my baby. That's what the side girl said. So she calls to check on her baby. Her mom answers the phone. But they speaking in code because her mom can tell that something's wrong. So she asked her, she said, do you need me to call the police? The girl said, yeah, and hung up. So, the police start calling the phone back to back. Jasmine answers the phone, so now she knows the girl called the police. So, they're like, okay, we got to get rid of her. We got to get rid of her because that's the only way we're going to get out of this. If I was a neighbor friend, I would have been like, we, uh-uh, Miss Mayo, you. <laughs> you better figure it out. So, they like, okay, let's put it in the car. So, they put it in the car. They go riding down the street. They fighting in the car. The girl is pissed. Jasmine, she 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 just cannot stand this girl. So they fighting in the car. They finally stop at a bridge. They pull her out. They start fighting on the side of the road. So the girl not knowing what to expect now, she just take off running. She looks over and she see that it's a bunch of grass while she's looking down from the bridge. She sees a bunch of grass. So she decides to jump. She jumps and it was a hard landing. She tried to get up to run, but she had broke her ankle. So she couldn't run. She was just stuck there. Soon as she started trying, you know, getting some rhythm 
to pull herself away from where she fell, here come Jasmine on her back and start fighting her again. But this time she had a knife. So the girl, they tussling. The girl able to keep her away, keep the knife away from her. You know, she didn't cut it in her arm and stuff like that. So after a while, smoke comes down, snatch the knife from Jasmine and just cut the girl neck. And then they just leave her there. And just went on about their day like nothing happened. And I think a few days later, somebody that was walking, their dog or whatever, ended up finding her. Called the police. Um, they was able to identify the body. You know, they put two and two together. Um, the, they called the club. The friends, of course, said the last time they seen her, she was with Smoke and his girlfriend. You know, they told them the whole story. So they called them down to the station. And at first, you know, they denied it, which they could have continued to do that because they didn't have any hard evidence that she was with them when something took place and they knew what kind of lifestyle she was living, you know, what, what she did for work. So they wasn't 100% sure that Smoke and Jasmine was the last people that she was with. She was with, But both of them ended up folding and just started blaming each other. So Smoke said she did it and she said Smoke did it. So they called the neighbor friends answer questioning too and they went ahead and told they side so I think I want to say smoke got 40 years Jasmine got probably the same a little around the same the boy the neighbor friend he got like 10 years and then the girl who the neighbor friend girlfriend they said her case was still pending. Whatever I mean, she had that in two weeks. All right. Okay, guys. So I hope you were done eating. If you're eating with me, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Eating Pretty Mutt Buns, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.